in this field. We have our final uh, speaker now, Brandon Fleming, uh, founder of the Harvard uh, Diversity Project. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Please permit me to first extend my fondest regards to the permanent mission of Nigeria and co-sponsors for pioneering such an auspicious occasion. This International Day of Education proceeds in the spirit of heroes throughout the annals of history who considered education to be among the human rights worth dying for. Mm -hmm. Understanding that education at best could be a pipeline to prosperity or the lack thereof a pipeline to poverty. Many years ago, there was a young man who suffered from traumatic abuse that manifested in school as deviant behaviors. His teachers labeled these characteristics to be that of a delinquent when they should have recognized it as a clarion cry for help. He was neglectfully passed along until found on the bed of suicide, disheveled, depressed, and deranged. His life was indeed spared, but his hope was in fact lost until one day he was restored and his life was forever changed by a teacher. Distinguished colleagues, I am that young man. This story is mine and inherently the catalyst of the Harvard Diversity Project. I share this experience with you because I was not and am not the only one in need of redemption. Studies show that a child born into poverty has a 4% chance of being delivered from its cyclical grasp. And what is that child's crime that they should be relegated to a life of struggle and suffering? When we observe the growing disparities that affect fragile, marginalized communities, and for those of us who have the moral sensibility to ask the question why, the answer is quite clear, access and equity. What is it that makes education so worth fighting for? It's what compels a man to drink hemlock for the sake of one's ability to question. It's what makes a man endure 27 years of imprisonment so that others can be free. It makes a young lady take a bullet to the head before giving up the right for young women to be learned. It's what makes a council of leaders and diplomats adopt a resolution to coalesce around the advancement of all people. Because every single one of us in this room understands the potential and power of education and its ability to transform one's mind, one's heart, and ultimately one's life. By promoting equitable education, we inevitably empower the human being to be self-sufficient. But we must first see equity as a collective responsibility, understanding that the most powerful thing you could ever do is stand up for a group that you don't belong to, be it another gender, another race, or another socioeconomic class. This is how we empower people. And this is how we foster inclusivity, by not just leading with the mind, but also leading with the heart. And in so many ways, the elements of nature can help us understand humanity. Analogously, our global community is just like a light. When you break it down to its most basic composition, it is a compilation of many colors, and without these colors, the light cannot shine at its brightest. But when each color is equally valued and equally represented, the effervescent light of humanity can shine through the unifying prism of peace. Because in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Thank you very much.